So hi folks, uh, welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. It has been a while, but uh, in this video we'll be checking out the QHI 268 monochrome camera. Well, I got this camera from QHI CCD and they allowed me to use and test their camera. So that's very nice of them. Thank you very much QHI and to be clear, I'm not receiving any financial compensation for this video, so I will just give you my honest opinion about this camera. In this video, we'll be getting into the camera specifications first, and I'll also show you my first light picture I was able to take with the 268 monochrome. And those who are following me, you should know that I have been using the ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera uh, as my main go-to camera to capture the night sky for the past couple of years. So. I will also be talking about the main differences between yeah, the popular 1600 Mono Pro and the new QHI 268 Monochrome. So let's get right into it. I do want to mention that I have been testing the Monochrome edition of the QHI 268. And if you're watching this video, you're probably already aware of the main pros and cons of shooting with a mono camera instead of a color camera. If you don't, I have other videos on my channel that go into that subject. And I will link to those videos in the video description below. Um, I personally like shooting in monochrome as I'm mostly imaging from a light polluted city sky. And yeah, shooting in monochrome in combination with filters, it allows me to block out large sections of that city light pollution that I'm confronted with. And it also allows me to shoot a narrow band to capture some of these awesome hydrogen alpha, sulfur and oxygen gases that are present in many deep sky nebulas. So as I'm Dutch, I have to start with the price first. And the QHI 268 monochrome is definitely a very high-end camera in that respect. It's available in most astrophotography shops for around $2,400 or euros. And that puts this camera right into the category of advanced astrophotographers who want to shoot with high-end consumer gear. And as a comparison, uh, my ASI 1600 Mono Pro is about half that price. It's available for about $1,250 or Euro. So I think a fair question to ask here is if the specifications of the QHI 268 monochrome are actually also twice as good as compared to the 1600 Mono Pro that is available for about uh, half the price. So let's check that out. So one of the most impressive things in my opinion about the QHI 268 is its huge sensor size. You'll be getting a full APS-C format CMOS sensor, uh, equivalent to actually many DSLR cameras that are on the market today. And I would say this is a huge step forward when looking at astrophotography cameras. Because just about five years ago, you'd be paying in excess of $5,000 or euros to get such a large sensor that is also optimized for astrophotography. So yeah, that's, I think that's really impressive. And the QHI 268 monochrome, it has a Sony IMX 571 sensor with a resolution of about 26 megapixels. So that's 6,280 by 4,210 pixels. And that's actually about uh, one and a half, 1.6 times actually more than the 1600 Mono Pro, which is a 60 megapixel camera with 4,656 by 3,520 pixels. So when we're talking about sensor size, I should also mention pixel size, right? So the QHI 268 monochrome, it has a pixel size of 3.76 mu, and that's almost equivalent to the 3.8 mu found on the 1600 Mono Pro. So in real life, this means that with the QHI 268, you will be able to capture about 1.5 times more sky as compared to the ASI 1600 Mono Pro. And that makes this camera ideally suited for wide field pictures, yeah, with many popular refractors that have a focal length of, uh, yeah, for instance, about 500 millimeters. 
If you use such a refractor, if you combine it with the QHI268 monochrome, you will be getting an imaging size of about 1.0 arc seconds per pixel. And yeah, that's actually ideal if you want to capture some of the larger nebulae in our Milky Way without the need to create a mosaic from different pictures from different parts of that nebula, which you then have to stitch together. So that's actually awesome. Of course, you can also use the QHI268 in combination with longer focal length telescopes to capture smaller deep sky objects. So for instance, I could pair this QHI-268 monochrome with my Edge HD 8 inch. Uh, that will get me to about uh, half an arc second per pixel when I use it at a 1500 millimeter focal length. Uh, and the camera of course also supports binning. So you might want to opt for two times two binning with a longer focal length telescope. And that will get you to about 1.1 arc seconds per pixel which is ideal actually to capture some of the smaller DSOs as well um, and also potential interesting objects around that DSO. So of course there are also some other huge differences actually. The QHI-268 monochrome, it has a 16-bit analog to digital converter versus the 12-bit ADC found on the 1600 Mono Pro. It also has a higher quantum efficiency of 80% versus 60% on the 1600 Mono Pro. And the QHI has a very impressive full well capacity of 51,000 versus 20,000 on the 1600. So of course the 268 monochrome, it can be cooled with minus 35 Celsius below ambient temperature to reduce the noise when uh, taking long exposure pictures. And one final thing I have to mention is that the QHI-268 monochrome, it is heavier and also a little bit larger as compared to the ZWO 1600 Mono Pro. So you might want to take that into account. So I do want to apologize to my regular viewers and also to QHI CCD because I haven't been posting a lot of videos lately and that's due to a combination of factors. Uh, first of all, my work as an assistant professor at my university, it has been taking up most of my time. And also my dad is currently in the hospital. Now, fortunately, it's not life threatening. He will be getting better, but it also takes quite some energy. And uh, quite frankly, the whole COVID-19 year has been quite challenging for me. I can imagine it has also been challenging for you. Um, for me, I was required to work from home in combination with taking care of my family. Um, anyway, this year really forced me to take a hard look at my life. And also I decided to take, yeah, to take a couple of decisions. So first of all, uh, I will be resigning from my uh, challenging university job in September in order to be able to spend more time with my family and friends. And this probably means that from September onwards, I will also have more time to get this channel back on track and hopefully post a lot of new videos. So I hope you'll stay tuned to my channel. Um, but enough about me, let's get back to the QHI-268 monochrome. Um, let's go outside so I can show you what kind of setup I've used to test this camera. So hi folks, let me quickly show you the setup that I will be using for tonight. So this is the QHI-268 monochrome camera, uh, hopefully the star of the show. I have connected this camera to my ZWO filter wheel, as you can see. Uh, I needed a very small adapter, you can see it here, to connect the QHI camera to this ZWO filter wheel. And I am using my 18mm f6 APO refractor, so this is a telescope service Photoline edition. Um, I have been using this uh, refractor for a couple of years and hopefully this combination will give me some very nice wide field images of the night sky. I do have to mention a couple of things. So I'm combining a QHI camera with a ZWO filter wheel. I don't think this is ideal. 
So for a couple of reasons. So first of all, um, the sensor size of the QSI 268 monochrome is of course very large. And also the back focus. So the distance from the top of the camera to the sensor is a little bit larger as compared to most other brands of cameras. So as compared to ZWO cameras. And I'm using this adapter. So potentially I will be experiencing some vignetting in my pictures. And if you're really serious about buying this camera, I would advise you um, to buy this camera in combination with a QHI filter wheel because these filter wheels they can be bolted directly onto the camera and that really reduces the distance from the sensor, the large sensor that is in this camera, to your filters. And also I would advise you to buy at least a two inch filters or to use two inch filters with this large sensor camera. So hopefully it stays clear and hopefully I will be able to get some first light images with this camera. Stay tuned.